This episode is brought to you by IVP. If we're honest, many of us hesitate to disciple others because we don't feel qualified. Maybe we fear we'll do more harm than good, or we think we don't have time. In her book, Discipleship as Holy Collaboration, Yolanda Solomon walks us through the life of Jesus and explores Jesus' call to make disciples as an invitation to collaborate with God in a sacred group project. As a listener of this podcast, you can receive this book for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Joshua chapter 8, through Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 8, Israel conquers I. The Lord told Joshua, don't be afraid and don't panic. Take the whole army with you and march against I. See, I am handing over to you the king of Ai, along with his people, city and land. Do to Ai and its king what you did to Jericho and its king, except you may plunder its goods and cattle. Set an ambush behind the city. Joshua and the whole army marched against Ai. Joshua selected 30,000 brave warriors and sent them out at night. He ordered them, Look, set an ambush behind the city. Do not go very far from the city. All of you be ready. I and all the troops who are with me will approach the city. When they come out to fight us like before, we will retreat from them. They will attack us until we have lured them from the city, for they will say, they are retreating from us like before. We will retreat from them. Then you rise up from your hiding place and seize the city. The Lord your God will hand it over to you. When you capture the city, set it on fire in keeping with the Lord's message. See, I have given you orders. Joshua sent them away, and they went to their hiding place west of Ai, between Bethel and Ai. Joshua spent that night with the army. Bright and early the next morning, Joshua gathered the army, and he and the leaders of Israel marched at the head of it to Ai. All the troops that were with him marched up and drew near the city. They camped north of Ai on the other side of the valley. He took 5,000 men and set an ambush west of the city between Bethel and Ai. The army was in position, the main army north of the city and the rear guard west of the city. That night, Joshua went into the middle of the valley. When the king of Ai and all his people saw Israel, they rushed to get up early. Then the king and the men of the city went out to meet Israel in battle at the meeting place near the Rift Valley. But he did not realize an ambush was waiting for him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel pretended to be defeated by them, and they retreated along the way to the wilderness. All the reinforcements in Ai were ordered to chase them. They chased Joshua and were lured away from the city. No men were left in Ai or Bethel. They all went out after Israel. They left the city wide open and chased Israel. The Lord told Joshua, Hold out toward I the curved sword in your hand, for I am handing the city over to you. So Joshua held out toward I the curved sword in his hand. When he held out his hand, the men waiting in ambush rose up quickly from their place and attacked. 
They entered the city, captured it, and immediately set it on fire. When the men of Ai turned around, they saw the smoke from the city ascending into the sky and were so shocked they were unable to flee in any direction. In the meantime, the men who were retreating to the wilderness turned against their pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the men in ambush had captured the city and that the city was going up in smoke, they turned around and struck down the men of Ai. At the same time, the men who had taken the city came out to fight and the men of Ai were trapped in the middle. The Israelites struck them down, leaving no survivors or refugees, but they captured the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai, who had chased them toward the wilderness, they all fell by the sword. All Israel returned to Ai and put the sword to it. Twelve thousand men and women died that day, including all the men of Ai. Joshua kept holding out his curved sword until Israel had annihilated all who lived in Ai. But Israel did plunder the cattle and the goods of the city, in keeping with the Lord's orders to Joshua. Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanently uninhabited mound. It remains that way to this very day. He hung the king of Ai on a tree, leaving him exposed until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered that his corpse be taken down from the tree. They threw it down at the entrance of the city gate and erected over it a large pile of stones. It remains to this very day. Covenant Renewal Then Joshua built an altar for the Lord God of Israel on Mount Ebal. Just as Moses the Lord's servant had commanded the Israelites, As described in the law scroll of Moses, it was made with uncut stones untouched by an iron tool. On it they offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord and sacrificed tokens of peace. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua inscribed on the stones a duplicate of the law written by Moses. All the people, rulers, leaders, and judges were standing on either side of the ark in front of the Levitical priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Both resident foreigners and native Israelites were there. Half the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and the other half in the front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the Lord's servant, had previously instructed them to do for the formal blessing ceremony. Then Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, including the blessings and the curses, just as they are written in the law scroll. Joshua read aloud every commandment Moses had given before the whole assembly of Israel, including the women, children, and resident foreigners who lived among them. Joshua chapter 9. The Gibeonites Deceive Israel When the news reached all the kings on the west side of the Jordan, in the hill country, the foothills, and all along the Mediterranean coast, as far as Lebanon, including the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, they formed an alliance to fight against Joshua and Israel. When the residents of Gibeon heard what Joshua did to Jericho and I, they did something clever. They collected some provisions and put worn-out sacks on their donkeys along with worn-out wineskins that were ripped and patched. They had worn-out patched sandals on their feet and dressed in worn-out clothes. All their bread was dry and hard. They came to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant land. Make a treaty with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you live near us. So how can we make a treaty with you? But they said to Joshua, We are willing to be your subjects. So Joshua said to them, Who are you and where do you come from? They told him, Your subjects have come from a very distant land because of the reputation of the Lord your God, for we have heard the news about all he did in Egypt and all he did to the two Amorite kings on the other side of the Jordan, King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan and Ashtaroth. Our leaders and all who live in our land told us, Take provisions for your journey and go meet them. Tell them, we are willing to be your subjects. Make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we packed it in our homes, the day we started out to meet you, but now it is dry and hard. These wineskins we filled were brand new, but look how they have ripped. Our clothes and sandals have worn out because it has been a very long journey. The men examined some of their provisions, but they failed to ask the Lord's advice. Joshua made a peace treaty with them and agreed to let them live. The leaders of the community sealed it with an oath. Three days after they made the treaty with them, the Israelites found out they were from the local area and lived nearby. So the Israelites set out and on the third day arrived at their cities, Gibeon, Kephira, Beeroth, and Kiriath-Jerim. The Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the community had sworn an oath to them in the name of the Lord God of Israel. The whole community criticized the leaders, but all the leaders told the community, We swore an oath to them in the name of the Lord God of Israel, so now we can't hurt them. 
We must let them live so we can escape the curse attached to the oath we swore to them. The leaders then added, let them live so they became woodcutters and water carriers for the whole community as the leaders had decided. Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said to them, Why did you trick us by saying we live far away from you when you really live nearby? Now you are condemned to perpetual servitude as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. They said to Joshua, It was carefully reported to your subjects how the Lord your God commanded Moses his servant to assign you the whole land and to destroy all who live in the land from before you. Because of you, we were terrified. We will lose our lives, so we did this thing. So now we are in your power. Do to us what you think is good and appropriate. Joshua did as they said. He kept the Israelites from killing them. And that day made them woodcutters and water carriers for the whole community and for the altar of the Lord at the divinely chosen site. They continue in that capacity to this very day. New Testament reading. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. The Transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them privately up a high mountain. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Then Moses and Elijah also appeared before them, talking with him. So Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my one dear son, in whom I take great delight. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they were overwhelmed with fear and threw themselves down with their faces to the ground. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. When they looked up, all they saw was Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Do not tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the experts in the law say that Elijah must come first? He answered, Elijah does indeed come first and will restore all things. And I tell you that Elijah has already come, yet they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted, in the same way the Son of Man will suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. The Transfiguration. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed and his clothes became very bright, a brilliant white. Then two men, Moses and Elijah, began talking with him. They appeared in glorious splendor and spoke about his departure that he was about to carry out at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those with him were quite sleepy, but as they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. Then as the men were starting to leave, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he was saying. As he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. So they kept silent and told no one at that time anything of what they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. God, I thank you. Thank you, O God, for the stories, O Lord God, written there in your word, O God. First of all, O God, it's so easy to miss, O God, but but the way, O Lord God, that Joshua and the Israelites, O God, were tricked by the Gibeonites. There was this one sentence, O God, in that passage about how they did not, at that time, they they did, this is my remix, of course, but that they did not seek the Lord about the story that the Gibeonites were telling them about their clothes being worn out and their sandals being worn out and the bread being dry and crusty. God, what a warning. What a lesson for us to learn to, to seek you in all things. Oh God, nothing too small. Nothing too great for us 
to seek your face on, to get counsel on, to get your wisdom. And we know that the Holy Spirit will reveal to us all things, O God. As leaders, it is so important for us to seek the face of God in everything, O God, because there are consequences, O Lord, for that, O God. And when they realized that they were tricked, oh God, they, that, that wasn't a good outcome, oh God. But they knew, they knew that they had sworn an oath by the, your name, oh God. And they knew they had to uphold that. They swore to their own hurts, oh God, because they did not seek your face, oh God. Lord, that we, Lord, that we would, oh Lord God, fear your name <laughs> and fear your covenant so much, oh God, that we would not seek oh Lord God, to back out on our commitments, to back out, oh God, on our word, oh Lord God, but help us not to make these words hastily, oh Lord God. Help us to think, oh Lord God, to seek your face before we make such commitments, oh Lord God, and promises, oh Lord God, and vows, oh Lord. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful record of the transfiguration. God, when I read that story, I just, I have a vision, oh God, of what that Transfiguration must have been like, oh God, for Peter and the disciples to have witnessed Jesus transfigured right before their very eyes. Oh God, and the vision in my mind, oh God, of course, pales in comparison to what the reality was for them. God, I thank you. I thank you, oh God, that one day we will see Jesus face to face. We will see you, the thrice holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit face to face. And we won't have to imagine what that must have been like. We won't have to piece it together in our own finite minds. We're going to see you, oh God, and we will be like you. Thank you, God. We can't wait for that day. Hasten the day, oh God. Make us ready. I pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Get in the Word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Something to say